Good morning and welcome to this uh, start the day for the first Friday in May and it will also have a special focus uh, in praying for the coronation this morning as well. And as you can see we have an addition to our start the day this morning and we've had um, when we had and when we did our start the day for March and um, we had many of our puppies um, having a good good fun play behind us and um, many of you have asked um, how, how they're doing. A um, number of them went to locally and, and some further afield so um, and we, we've kept one and this is, this is Flory who I hope won't be too much of a distraction this morning we, we <laughs> for certainly, us and for you. We understand for some of those who joined us two months ago they were quite a distraction um, from uh, the psalm but anyway uh, I'm sure she'll jump down in a moment. But uh, we're, we're going to be um, reading this morning Psalm 122 and uh, that's one of the psalms in our reading pattern for this week. And uh, so those who follow it will have already read the psalm earlier in the week. But it seemed really appropriate for the um, uh, praying for the coronation because it's a psalm that is, um, well, actually for 400 years, it's the first thing that's sung at the beginning of the coronation service. As, uh, the monarch arrives, um, Psalm 122 is sounded out, those wonderful words, I was glad. And they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And for over 100 years, the uh, setting um, that many of you will know uh, of that psalm is, that's been sung is uh, Hubert Parry's I Was Glad. So we're going to read the psalm and then um, share a few thoughts on and how it can inspire our prayers um, for the coronation and, and, and onwards. So we're going to read Psalm 122. Shall I start with this? I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. And when we were um, reading this uh, yesterday and reflecting on, on the coronation, um, it, it struck us that um, tomorrow uh, there will be all the wonderful um, processions and the grandeur and the pageantry of, of this tremendous occasion. Um, but all of it is leading towards this moment um, where uh, of, of moving towards an act of worship. That's the, the centre of the coronation tomorrow. Um, it's that moment of going to the house of the Lord. And of course, um, the psalm is talking about Jerusalem and, and particularly going uh, to the presence uh, uh, of God in the temple. And, and of course, the Westminster Abbey, um, for all its beauty and as, as a sacred place of prayer, doesn't represent the temple in Jerusalem. But what it does represent is a, is a place where the people of God, and particularly in our, our nation's life, have gone to pray, to worship, to put Jesus at the centre of what's happening in sad times and and in some wonderfully happy times and and, and tomorrow will be a, a time to to rejoice but above all it's journeying towards all the preparation in fact for the king 70 years of preparation for the throne all of that's leading uh, to being in the presence of God to worship and to pray um, and in particular here the invitation uh, as David extends it for all the people to gather with him in praying we were also particularly struck by the phrase, peace be within you. And it reminded us that peace in the Bible is not just about the end of, end of wars um, or conflict, um, but the peace is a gift from God um, and that he puts in our hearts, um, giving us a deeper sense um, of what it is to be secure and content, um, whatever may be going on in our own lives and, and in the world. Um, and we really can have that peace inside, even when everything around um, is, is anything but peaceful um, because of the presence of Jesus um, who is always with us and he, his love makes us uh, more secure than we can ever imagine. Yeah. And so um, as we think about praying uh, for uh, tomorrow, for praying for the king and, uh, and the queen and all the people who are going to be gathered there and, and around the, the nation, beyond, beyond the nation, um, 
I think this psalm gives us some really good things to pray for, to pray for that, that deeper peace, to pray, the psalm encourages us to pray for our families and friends, to pray for the nations, um, and, uh, and above all, um, uh, to, to pray that we, we won't find our security in anything other than, than confidence in the God who is with us um, in every, every circumstance. So we're going to, we're we're going to, pray. to pray. Dear Lord, please put your peace deep within us that we may know how secure we are because of the presence of Jesus in our lives. Please bless our friends, our families and all the royal family tomorrow and beyond. Lead us together into the peace of Christ through his love on the cross and the power of his resurrection from the dead and all the glory of the King of all kings. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, thank you for joining us uh, this morning and uh, whatever you're doing over the weekend and whoever you're spending uh, tomorrow with, as uh, it may be with, with family or friends or, or with uh, uh, people who live nearby, or maybe it will be a, a quiet day, but, but, but hopefully we can all uh, join together in praying uh, for the life of our nation, uh, to pray particularly for friends and family and uh, to pray for God's blessing on uh, the King and the Queen tomorrow. So whatever you're doing this weekend, may God bless you too.